For the 2011 model year, the LX platform received a major reworking and was dubbed the LD platform. With the new platform came an updated body style. The front fascia was built to be more aggressive looking and the rear was given a look reminiscent of the 1969-70 Charger. The hood and sides were also given scallops as homage to the same era. Under the hood, the new base engine was the 292 horsepower 3.6 liter Pentastar V6 that powered all SE and SXT models. The RT received a 370 horsepower 5.7 liter Hemi and the SRT8 wasn't produced that year, but returned for the 2012 model year. When it did return, it returned with the SRT8 and SRT8 Super B, both sporting a 470 horsepower 6.4 liter under the hood. The 2013 and 2014 model years were pretty much the same. All trim levels offered were the same as 2012 with only a few minor changes. For starters, the Pentastar V6 was still available with 292 horsepower, but was given a slight boost up to 300 with certain packages. Also, Dodge offered a limited edition trim level for the SRT8 named the 392 appearance package. With a limited run of 392 units, the package consisted of the addition of black trim on the hood, roof, side mirrors, and rear spoiler, with SRT branded lower side body stripes that stretched the entire side of the car. The Hemi engine received 392 engine covers, and the car rolled on exclusive 20 inch split five spoke black vapor chrome wheels. Each car received a special serialized dash plaque showing the production build number out of 392, and was offered in five exterior colors. This package was offered only for the 2013 and 2014 model years. For 2015, the Charger received a facelift. The front grille was heavily revised, removing the quad headlights and replacing them with LED headlights. The rear was also updated with the rear tail light treatment similar to the short-lived Dart. The trim levels remained pretty much the same as the previous platform. You had your base SE, SE all-wheel drive, and SXT, all powered by the 3.6 liter Pentastar V6 engine. You also had the standard Charger RT and upgrade RT road and track package. Both vehicles are powered by the 370 horsepower 5.7 liter Hemi V8. The SRT8 Charger was replaced with the SRT392 with the optional RT scat pack trim. Both are powered by the 485 horsepower 6.4 liter Hemi otherwise known as the 392, and also sports upgraded suspension, active exhaust, larger 20 by nine wheels, and four piston Brembo brakes at all corners. Now, if you've seen my video on the history of the Dodge Challenger, you'll recall where I mentioned that from the introduction of this latest generation up until now, it seems that Dodge had been merely playing it safe, which is why up until now, the Charger had been merely so-so. I mean, compared to the competition at the time, the Buick LaCrosse, Chevy Impala, Chevy SS, Crasher 300, the Charger really didn't stand out unless it was the SRT8. Having said that, I'm quite sure Dodge's top management was tired of being lost in the crowd when they knew they were capable of leading the pack. Not only did they want to lead the pack, they wanted to obliterate the pack. So Dodge engineers put their heads together and came up with the most menacing sedan to date that would change high performance sedans forever. The Charger SRT Hellcat. Named after the Grumman F6F Hellcat fighter plane of World War II, the Hellcat engine, at first glance, might just look like a 392 Hemi with a blower, but it's so much more than that. First of all, the Hellcat's displacement isn't 392 cubic inches or 6.4 liters. It does, however, start with a 6.4 liter Apache BGE thick high nickel content engine block. But this block is fortified with thicker webbing and also with longer water jackets that go all the way down to encompass the piston even at bottom dead center. The new Hellcat displaces 6.2 liters with the bore remaining at 4.09 inches but with a shorter 3.58 inch stroke like the 5.7 liter Hemi with a forged steel crankshaft instead of the nodular iron version found in your standard 5.7. The connecting rods are still powdered metal, 
but are of a thicker casting with upgraded rod bolts. The full floating hypertechnic pistons are replaced with full floating forged pistons with oil squirters to promote cooling. The material atop the piston is also thicker for added strength in addition to built-in support ribs. Cylinder heads are the same as the 6.4 passenger car engine, but are cast in more resilient 356 T6 aluminum. With the Hellcat specific pistons, compression ratio is 9.5 to 1. The valve train is operated by a new camshaft with a 0.571-0.536 inch lift for the intake and exhaust respectively and a duration of 278-304 degrees. MDS is not used on any of these blower engines, but they do continue to use VCT. This bulletproof combo is topped off by a 2.4 liter twin screw supercharger developed by IHI specifically for Chrysler. It's capable of 11.6 pounds of boost in stock form. It's equipped with integral charge coolers that keep the inlet air temps below 140 degrees Fahrenheit and is sealed for life with its own synthetic oil supply. Fed through a 92 millimeter throttle body, it can spin up to 14,600 RPM, pumping six gallons of air into the engine per minute. The exhaust gas is exited via two and three quarter inch active exhaust system. This entire combination works together to produce a whopping 707 horsepower and 650 pound-feet of torque, making it the most powerful engine ever offered in a muscle car and the fifth most powerful engine ever produced in the world. The Hellcat engine was made it to the only transmission available for the Charger Hellcat, the 8HP90 8 8-speed automatic. Power was transferred to an independent rear suspension with a 2.62 final drive. The Hellcat Charger suspension was treated to stiffer springs and adjustable shocks, a slight upgrade from the RT Scat Pack. On the exterior, the car was given a more aggressive look that was shared with the RT Scat Pack with a new front fascia, subtle side skirts, and a deck lid spoiler. The hood sported a scoop similar to the SRT8, but smoothed out with extraction vents on either side. The entire package rolled on 20 by 9.5 inch alloy black wheels with 27540 Pirelli tires on all four corners with the optional dark bronze wheels, otherwise known as the Brass Monkeys. All 707 ponies were brought to a halt with four piston Brembo calipers and 13.8 inch rotors in the rear and six piston Brembo bricks with massive 15.4 inch diameter rotors up front. In spite of the ridiculous horsepower boost, the Hellcat Charger exhibited exquisite road manners for daily driving. That was because of the dual key setup, a black key and a red key. The black key limited the engine to 500 horsepower, plenty for daily driving. But then there was the red key that unleashed all 707 horses. In the red key mode, the Charger Hellcat was nothing short of a blunt instrument meant to bludgeon the competition into submission. It sliced, it diced, it smashed, it destroyed. Dodge touted the Charger Hellcat being able to punish the quarter mile in 11 seconds flat with a 204 mile an hour top speed, calling it the fastest, most powerful sedan in the world. And no one can argue with that. The Charger SRT Hellcat, along with its smaller brother, the Challenger SRT Hellcat, redefined the word muscle car. If you thought your 446 pack could bring the heat, it's nothing compared to today's modern muscle. True, you'll never beat the nostalgia or sense of history the classic muscle cars brought us, but these new cars brought a whole nother level of muscle and performance. A level we've never seen before, and we wanted more of it, much more. With the introduction of the Charger Hellcat, the bar was raised for performance sedans, extremely high. In 2015, the Mercedes S-Class came close with 621 horsepower, and in 2016, the Cadillac CTSV entered the fray with 640 horsepower. However, the Hellcat remained at the top of the horsepower heap the entire time it was in production. The introduction of the Red Eye at 797 horsepower further solidified the Hellcat's dominance. We'll come back to the Red Eye later. The 2016 through 2019 model years remained virtually unchanged. I mean, why mess with a good thing? Plus, Dodge was feverishly working on a successor to the Challenger Hellcat. To find out more on the Challenger, check out the video on the history of the Dodge Challenger. However, Dodge did have a couple of tricks up their sleeves for the Charger. For 2018, 
the SC trim was dropped and the SXT gained an SXT Plus option. The GT all-wheel drive was the next level up, which rounded out the V6 trim levels. For the V8 line, they brought back the Daytona trim level for either the 5.7 or 392 Hemi. The RT Scat Pack, SRT 392, and SRT Hellcat remained the same. While it may seem that the Charger was being ignored at this time, it's probably because the SRT crew were busy working on the debut of the 2018 Challenger Demon. This is where Dodge pulled out all stops to build a successor to the Hellcat, and boy did they ever. Beginning with the Challenger Hellcat, Dodge lightened it up by 215 pounds, tuned the suspension for drag racing, gave it super wide 315 millimeter rubber at all four corners, and a wide body kit to match. The engine consisted of a beefed up 6.2 liter Hellcat engine block and rotating assembly, a new camshaft specific to the Demon, and a 2.7 liter blower to replace the Hellcat's 2.4 liter version that could pump out as much as 14.5 PSI. The new engine produced 808 horsepower and 717 pound-feet of torque on 91 octane gas and 840 horsepower with 770 pound-feet of torque when running race fuel. The end result produced a drag strip eating street monster that could do 0 to 16 in 2.3 seconds and a 9.65 quarter mile at 140 miles an hour, lifting the front wheels at launch. What they didn't do is build a demon version of the Charger. It made sense. The Challenger had the best chance at being light, therefore it had the best chance at being the fastest. For 2019, the all-wheel drive option switched from the GT to the SXT and everything else remained pretty much the same with only minor tweaks. 2020 brought more of the same, with some exceptions. Let me explain. All of the lower trim levels remained pretty much the same, even the RT which has been rock solid from the beginning. The RT Scat Pack drops the RT and is now known as just the Scat Pack. Now here's where things start to get interesting. Back in 2018 when Dodge unleashed the Challenger Demon with its wide body kit, Dodge also offered a wide body kit as an option for his Hellcat line, calling it the Hellcat wide body. Well, it's safe to say that the wide body kit looks so good on the Challenger, the Charger folk wanted one as well. So what did Dodge do for 2020? Offered it as an option for the Scat Pack Chargers and as far as the Hellcat was concerned, every Hellcat produced in 2020 was a wide body. With the wide body package, you get special fenders stamped to accommodate the fender flares, 20 by 11 wheels with 305, 35, 20 tires, and more aggressive front and rear balances. The Hellcat took things even a step further with the extra venting on the hood with a slightly larger scoop. For 2021, the all-wheel drive option was now offered for the SXT as well as the GT. The RT remained the same as well as the Scat Pack and Scat Pack wide body. The Hellcat was once again offered in only the wide body configuration with the standard body Hellcat permanently dropped. It was also given a power boost up to 717 horsepower and 650 pound-feet of torque. However, the biggest change came in the form of a new model the SRT Hellcat Red Eye. Now, anybody that knows their Mopars already knows that the Challenger already had a Red Eye package since 2019. But in case you're not clear on the difference between a regular Hellcat and a Hellcat Red Eye, listen up. The Challenger Demon was, at the time, the fastest production car Dodge had to offer, and they only ran it for one model year. However, the following year, Dodge could not let the Demon go away completely. So they took the Demon engine and dropped it in the Hellcat, 2.7 liter blower in all. The end result was a package that produced 797 horsepower and 707 pound-feet of torque. Other upgrades included a beefed up 8 HP transmission, track tuned suspension, and additional coolers for the engine and blower. Dodge took the already crazy Hellcat and drove it completely insane with the addition of the Demon engine. The Charger Hellcat had already redefined performance to dance at 707 horsepower, 
but the introduction of the red eye took the bar and placed it on the moon. Look, I understand. There were performance sedans that were more luxurious, better handling, more economical, more practical, and more user-friendly. But there was something about the rumble of the engine, the crackle of the exhaust, the whine of the blower, the smoke of the tires, and the way the pure G-forces bear you to the back of your seat that forced this huge grin on your face and evoked feelings of euphoria that matched nothing else. Power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Now, it's no secret that Chrysler has had some major financial troubles over the years and changed ownership a few times. It's not really surprising, as many of the American auto manufacturers have been bought and sold in order to stay afloat. Many well-known brands have been cut in order to drop what they considered to be dead weight. In 1998, Chrysler was acquired by Daimler-Benz. While we got some good cars out of the merger, things didn't really work out for the two companies and Daimler sold Chrysler in 2007 to Cerberus. Then in 2008, the recession hit, causing Chrysler to file for bankruptcy in 2009. Through a series of government loans, Chrysler emerged from the financial crisis spread pretty thin with the coalition of owners. In 2014, Chrysler was purchased by Fiat and became Fiat Chrysler Automobiles, or FCA. They continued on as a company until 2021 when FCA merged with the French-owned Peugeot SA, or PSA Group, renaming the conglomerate Stellantis. Headquartered in Amsterdam, Stellantis consists of 16 automotive brands overall, and this is where we have our current situation. Now, as far back as the 50s and early 60s, our local and national governing bodies have had a watchful eye on the automotive industries, notably concerning safety and emissions. Then, in the 1970s, we had the OPEC oil crisis, which meant that everyone became concerned about fuel mileage as well. What we ended up with instead were entities like CAFE that set the standards for fuel mileage in new vehicles. Any vehicle that doesn't meet the standards will suffer a penalty fine for each one produced. We also end up with things like carbon credits. They're given out to automotive manufacturers whenever they produce highly fuel-efficient vehicles and allow them to apply those credits to some of their not-so-fuel-efficient vehicles. Running out of those credits can result in heavy fines to the manufacturers. Which brings us back to Stellantis. They purchased Chrysler and, well, it needs work. A lot of work. It's been through bankruptcies, been sold a couple of times, so Chrysler's damaged goods, in spite of the popularity of the Hemi-powered vehicles. A company like Stellantis will come in and see where they can cut the waste and where there are opportunities to build and profit. One thing that kills profits are fines and penalties, to which I'm sure each Hellcat draws fines for each unit produced. Plus, since as of 2021, Chrysler didn't make very many hybrids to sell, so it's fair to say that when it came to carbon credits, Chrysler was deficient. Anyone knows that in order for a company to be profitable, you have to stop the hemorrhaging of money and introduce products that will hopefully make money. In other words, stop production of the Hemi and Pentastar engines in favor of something that will hopefully make money. More on that later. Twenty twenty two. The production line was as such. The SXT that came standard with the 292 horsepower 3.6 liter Pentastar V6, and if you check the box for all wheel drive, your Pentastar was upgraded to 300 horsepower along with an upgrade to 19 inch wheels over the standard 17s. Next in line was the GT, which was an upgrade from the rear wheel drive SXT, but received 20 by 8 inch wheels as standard, scat packaged body work, and adjustable suspension. The GT also had an all-wheel drive option. Next was the RT. Once again, the RT has been the steady in this relationship, never changing, only to get better. It comes standard with the 370 horsepower 5.7 liter Hemi. The next up was the Scat Pack. Powered by the 6.1 liter 392 Hemi, it puts out 485 horsepower and comes with a ton of performance upgrades, including 20 by 9 inch wheels, and four-piston Brembo brakes at all corners. 
The scat back wide body is next up, offering the same powertrain but the obvious wide body adaptations in addition to 20 by 11 wheels, 305 35 tires, and six piston Brimble front calipers. If the scat pack wide body isn't enough for you, then there's the SRT Hellcat wide body, sharing the same body work as the scat pack wide body, except for the hood, which has hood vents and a larger scoop. The heart of the Hellcat is a 717 horsepower supercharged 6.2 liter Hemi. The brakes remain the same with six piston Brembo's in front and four piston Brembo's in rear. The SRT Hellcat Red Eye Wide Body comes in next with 797 horsepower. Rounding things off is Dodger's newest addition to the lineup, and that's the SRT Hellcat Wide Body Jailbreak. Yes, that was definitely a mouthful to say, but this latest iteration offers quite a bit in options that allows owners to make their Hellcat Red Eye more personalized and unique. You have a choice of exterior badge colors, seven wheel choices, five seat colors, and a plethora of other interior and exterior color combinations. The engine is the only item you're unable to customize from the factory. It's an even higher horsepower 6.2 liter Hemi. It's been upgraded with an SRT power chiller that was first offered on the 2018 Challenger Demon. It uses the refrigerator from the AC to cool the supercharger cooling even more than that of a standard Hellcat or Hellcat Red Eye. Final horsepower output was 807 and 707 pound-feet of torque. As we rolled into the 2023 model year, there was that lump in the pit of your stomach. That feeling you had as a kid when you got to go to your favorite amusement park or got to hang out with your favorite cousins or had an awesome summer vacation and the end was right around the corner. You still had fun as much as you could, but with each tick of the clock, you knew the time was coming quickly to make your way to the exit, pack up your toys to leave your cousin's house, or get your boring clothes ready for school the next day. That was the feeling knowing that as the 2023 Charger model year began, that this was the end of an era, the final countdown, the last call before everything changed. The models and options remain the same as 2022 with minor changes. All trim levels remain almost the same. The SXT, GT, RT, Scat Pack, and Scat Pack Wide Body were ready to go. However, the jailbreak option was made standard on both the SRT Hellcat and the SRT Hellcat Red Eye, giving customers the same option as in 2022 to tailor their SRT to their liking. But that wasn't the end of things. Dodge had one more trick up its sleeve for its final round of the V8 powered cars, the last call. With the demise of the third generation Hemi in plain view, Dodge knew that this was the end of an era and treated it as such. To commemorate this special yet bittersweet occasion, Dodge gave us six special edition vehicles spread out among the Challenger and Charger. Trim packages that were mostly throwbacks to the muscle car era of the 60s and 70s. There was the Challenger Shakedown, a look back to Dodge's Challenger concept car known as Shakedown, a build based on a 1971 Challenger, but with modern underpinnings and third gen Hemi power. There was the Challenger Black Ghost, a tribute to a legendary 1970 street racing Challenger. Then there was the Challenger SRT Demon 170. Not really a tribute to any previous muscle car, just a badass muscle car all by itself. Next, we have the Charger and Challenger Swinger that was a throwback to the 69 Dodge Dart Swinger. Following that, the Super B name was brought back and given to a limited run of Scat Pack wide bodies. 500 in Plum Crazy and 500 in B5 Blue. Finally, there was the King Daytona. This special charger was an homage to a very famous street racer back in the 60s and 70s, Big Willie Robinson. He was known for creating the brotherhood of street racers with the wish of uniting all races through, you guessed it, racing. One of his most famous cars was a 1969 Charger Daytona that he named King Daytona. His wife had a similar Daytona named Queen Daytona. <laughs> 